Hello, this is an instructional video on how to create boat lines drawings from scanned images. The scanned images are opened in GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program, which is freely available on the internet. The first task is to crop out the plan from the scanned image using the crop tool and then resizing it using the magnifying tool. Next uh, I will change the scale of the rulers to inches Now I'm going to clean up the drawings using the eraser tool and selection tool. This is the selection tool and uh, I will then paint the uh, selection with uh, white paint to fill it up, erase all of the text. This is uh, because it was scanned from a book, the image was distorted where the binding, the book binding was. So I'm using the perspective tool in GIMP to uh, correct for that distortion. And basically what you want to do is just create the same linear grid pattern as on the left hand side as on the right hand side. There will be some misalignment, but that can be corrected after the perspective is completed. And uh, now I've done that. You can see that it uh, um, and uh, now I've uh, correcting the, the water line alignment for the uh, perspective change. Now I use the measuring tool in the, the bottom left hand corner to uh, which it tells you where the pointer is the pointer uh, location use it to uh, measure both sides of the the boat that I corrected or the hull shape to make sure that the perspective is completed correctly and uh, now they're aligned properly as well Whenever you have a selection, you need to anchor it so that it uh, uh, pastes it onto the original drawing. You can also use the uh, adjustment tool to, to alignment tool to correct um, the alignment gives you finer details. Now I'm going to uh, continue on cleaning up the diagram, uh, the text on the left hand side of the drawing using the paintbrush tool and uh, you have to make sure that your foreground color is, is white in this case so that uh, it will paint over. One other thing that you need to do before you're uh, um, correcting the perspective and everything, once you do the original uh, crop from the 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 scan is you have to make sure that the water lines or the, the grids are exactly horizontal. And uh, in this case, it was uh, fine, but uh, 
if it's not you can correct that with the uh, rotation tool and uh, I didn't actually need to do that in this uh, plan that I'm working on so now I'm just uh, continuing to uh, clean up the diagram and when you need finer details you can uh, just magnify the image uh, by zooming in on it. I don't really need the front and rear views in the plans, so I'm not being too fussy with it, but uh, it's nice to have it included on the plans, and you can actually use it in the uh, when you're doing the molding of the the wood parts you can use it for reference Now the plans are mostly completed, um, but I do need to add the additional um, buttocks lines. You can see that the original plan only had the, the first three included, and in order to complete uh, all of the wood molding, I uh, need to add all the rest of the buttocks lines. And uh, what I'm doing right now is um, also I need to scale the image. You can see by the ruler at the top that the boat is only five inches across at this point. So I, I need to scale it up. And rather than changing the width and the height or the height of the, the image, uh, what I do is I lower the resolution. And in that... Uh, when you do that, it increases the image size. And uh, the purpose of lowering the resolution is that uh, if you resized it to the dimensions but left the resolution the same, it would insert new lines and that creates distortion. But if you just uh, lower the resolution, you can see that the, the measurements are changing quite quickly. And uh, what I typically try to go for is uh, eight inches on the vertical thing or one paper size and the models typically turn out to be about uh, 12 to 15 inches long and uh, so I'm just adjusting the resolution until I get that uh, dimension approximate dimension and you can see at this point I have about uh, 18 inches on the horizontal size so you just remember that you change the resolution of the image in order to change the size. Also, you don't typically want to go below 100 dpi because then it may not uh, print correctly. You can see at the scale at the top, the image is now approximately 18 inches across and 8 inches uh, down. So now I'm calculating the, the lift sizes and I want to find something, scale it to some value that uh, uh, it's at least within a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, it, it's too hard to cut the the wood templates at thirty seconds of an inch, so I typically try to go for uh, 
a quarter inch or five sixteenths or three eighths or something like that. So I'm just using the the measurement tool to uh, determine what the 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 lift uh, size is going to be. And what I'd also do is I I would measure across three of them, and by doing that it uh, reduces the the error if you only measured one. Um, you would there's always air involved with it, but if you measured three and divided, then you're dividing the the errors by uh, that many by three in this case. The next thing I'm doing is um, adding uh, the new buttocks lines uh, using the path tool and using the same technique as the calculating the lift size is I would add the new buttock lines in um, just as multiple of, of that uh, calculation. So I would multiply the 5 sixteenths in this case by 4 to get the, uh, the, the dimension from the center line to the new water line. And uh, in the calculator here you can kind of see me calculating it. I'm actually calculating it off of the, the pixel location or the, the pointer location that's down in the left hand lower corner. And this of course is using the paths tool. Uh, it allows you to adjust the, the connector points. As many times as you want to get the exact measurement and uh, so I'm measuring uh, either side to make sure it's uh, level or horizontal in this case and next uh, you would uh, click on uh, stroke the path that uh, indicates putting a line on the path. So here I've corrected or um, created the next two buttocks lines on the the view, the bottom view of the hull, and uh, now I need to add those to the side view of the hull, and I use the path tool for that. And here I am just connecting one that was missing in the original drawing. And uh, it's kind of tricky to use. Uh, the pass tool allows you to curve the lines. And uh, you probably want to just use GIMP instructions to see exactly how to do that. Um, by looking at the lower drawing, you can see the intersection points of all of the, the buttocks lines and to the corresponding water lines and or and by moving those connection points to the, the, the top part of the drawing you can uh, see where the connection points for those those lines are going to be. So I'm just completing that uh, first, the bottom of the first water line on the side view right now. This is something that you need to do in pretty much every drawing that uh, you get from from books they rarely complete the buttocks lines right to the outside of the hull and I typically use buttocks lines for my molds because to do water lines you would have to create too many templates usually around 10 or more whereas with the buttocks lines I usually only have to do five or six templates layers I should say five or six layers to the mold layers of wood so the uh, path tool it puts little handles on your 
on to the control points and you can actually adjust curves with them and uh, the good thing is is you can f adjust it until it's uh, perfect and then again you would uh, stroke the path and that would uh, place the new line in and you can see where it's filled in that new line so now I'm, I need to do the next two outside uh, buttocks lines that I just added previously and I need to add them to the half hull or side view part of the plan here I am calculating the intersection points and just putting control points on it that's at the actual water line that it's doing right now and uh, you can use the arrow at the top scale that uh, gives you better control over it placing those uh, points By pulling the middle of the line, it uh, extends the control points out from each uh, anchor point that you, you put down. And it takes a little bit of adjustment, but uh, generally it's uh, pretty easy to uh, get to it whenever you finish in doing the line before you stroke the line uh, zoom out and uh, that gives you better perspective um, on how the the line looks alongside of the other buttocks lines it, sh it should flow relatively uniformly when uh, you've uh, completed it properly and then you always need to stroke the line before you click off of the the pass tool or else the uh, path will be deleted and you'll have to start over again Just fine-tuning the lines by looking at the intersection points on the uh, the bottom view, bottom view of the the boat, and you can see where those buttocks lines intersect the the grid, and uh, you just need to uh, transfer that. Um, I did mark the water line on the the bottom 
grid with a thicker line that's to help you uh, in reference to the the water lines as it goes above and below the actual water line uh, you can count those those levels down and that's actually what I'm doing right now when I count the intersection points I count down from the the water line The curve is starting to look uh, fairly fair with the water line or the buttocks line before it. And uh, And just remember, don't click off of the Paths tool or else uh, it will uh, delete whatever you've done so far. So now I'm just stroking the line with a 2-pixel line, and uh, that's been completed now. Now I can uh, continue on with the next one, the final line. Oh, I think I uh, just made it, corrected the line width there. So that's been completed, and I zoom out a bit to uh, verify how it looks with the other lines. So now I'm going to work on the final buttocks line, the fifth. And again, this is... Uh, the buttocks lines are used for cutting the wood templates. And um, each wood, piece of wood is cut to the, the buttock line. And then the, the layer is built up from that. Layers are built up and glued from those.
And again, just by stretching the middle line, it uh, puts the control handles on. And uh, that allows me to uh, uh, control the curve of the lines. I'm just trying to adjust the curve to cross so that the line crosses the, the, the water lines in the same spot it does in the lower drawing. You want these water lines to represent the actual plan as much as possible because it's a critical part of the, the molding, the buttocks lines. Cause, all right, so now I'm just uh, stroking the line and uh, I've uh, completed the... the molding. Now I'm just adding some text to the top of the drawing. I usually put the scale and, and the lift dimensions in there. So I use that with the, uh, you do that by using the text tool. And uh, just trying to uh, get it started in the correct spot. And uh, you can adjust the text size and and uh, so that's all completed now. So now I just need to save the drawing at the end. And then I need to export it to a PNG file, which has come up now. And I've saved that. And that's all just defaults there. And now I've uh, saved it. I open up the folder where it saves in. And uh, I open up the diagram that I saved in in paint so you can see it says mod in there and uh, if you do a right click on it you can uh, select open with paint and the reason I put it in paint is because it has the best printing capabilities that I've found So this is actually adjusting it to how many pages 
and in this case it's uh, two pages long. And, uh, I think I show the It's just a print preview, and that's the finished drawing on two pages. And uh, once I print that, I would uh, then paste the two pages together, just with tape. Oh, and choose. Make sure that you print only in black and white. Sometimes the when you get scanned images, you get some color casting. Oh. View parts two and three for instructions on how to complete a finished model. Thank you.